Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to another edition of Hilal Live, all the way from the uh, Cape Town studios. My name is Lukman Shadrach. Thanks for joining us on Channel 347 on DSTV. It's that time of the year where we are all planning and would like to uh, make our pilgrimage on Hajj or to Hajj. And uh, uh, we often need to investigate what is the best Hajj operator, the rules, the regulations. And I thought, let's invite Sauk onto the show to explain to us how everything fits together. What are the parameters that we need to consider? And if you need to ask any questions, we're going to open up the WhatsApp line uh, so that you can communicate uh, with uh, the second deputy uh, president who's going to join us very shortly. WhatsApp uh, 079-085-2511. If you have any questions with regards to your Hajj, this is the time to join us and ask those questions. Joining us all the way from Durban is the second deputy of Sauk, uh, Sheikh Adam Macheso. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh, and welcome. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Zakallah uh, Khairan for the uh, for the opportunity, Brother Luqman. And uh, also, I want to say assalamu alaikum to the viewers of Hilal TV. Jazakallah Thank you Sheikh. for having me. I would imagine that it's a very busy time for Sahuk now as well, that uh, quite a bit needs to be considered and that uh, a lot of preparations uh, are being conducted as we speak as well. But for those that don't know too much about how Sahuk works and what are the parameters, give us a bit of history on why Sahuk was formed and uh, what is the reason and the assistance that Sahuk uh, plays with our South African uh, Hujaj. Zakallah Khairan, Brother Luqman Shadrach. Yes, indeed. Uh, Sahuk actually um, uh, was formed back in 1995, and uh, there's a whole history uh, around it and um, why it was actually, you know, uh, it was formed. And uh, one of the reasons was that, you know, the hujaj were being taken for a ride mm-hmm. by, you know, hydro operators, et cetera. And uh, hence the initiative. And Alhamdulillah, from then, Sahuk has evolved. And there has been quite a number of, you know, developments within Sahuk uh, 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 right up to uh, this moment that we speak. First and foremost, we need to realize that uh, South Africa is not a Muslim country, mm-hmm. and as such, uh, it receives a quota. Mm-hmm. Um, and the quota that South Africa receives is 2,500 every year. Right. Now, that constitutes a population of two and a half million, because each million is equivalent to 1,000 hajjis. Right. So if we claim and we say that there are two and a half million Muslims in South Africa, then we are provided with a quota of 2,500. Right. At times, of course, we have like an increase, an increase in the quota, and uh, that is when we are like fortunate, and instead of having 2,500, the quota goes up to 3,500. And in some cases in the recent past, we have had a quota of 4,000. But that is, you know, neither here nor there, but the, you know, the actual quota for South Africa is 2,500. Okay. Um, so much, Sheikh, for sharing so, that as well. And, you know, uh, um, obviously we're not used to this. We're not used to these low quotas uh, compared to years ago when, you know, thousands of our hujaj uh, were able to attend uh, Hajj as well, but obviously that has changed over the years. Sheikh, the accreditation process, let's uh, run through that very quickly. How does it work and what are the parameters surrounding the accreditation system? Sahuk's accreditation system is a very simple system. Um, before the accreditation happens, Sahuk releases a dynamic list. And that dynamic list is kept alive for a period of, if my memory serves me right, serves me right is between one and a half to two months. Okay. During which the, those that applied for Hajj have the opportunity to view their position in the queue. Mm-hmm. And 
At that point, they will know where they stand in the queue. And accreditation is based on date and time priority. Hence, if you apply now, um, you will have to wait for a number of years before you can actually be accredited. Okay. If I may just maybe uh, add this particular information so that we realize and so that we know what we are dealing with, there are about 52,000 people or who judge that are waiting in the queue as I speak to you right now, brother. Sure. Now, the quota that we see is 2,500. Mm -hmm. In order to get to 52,000, you can imagine how long it will take before we can get to that particular figure. Absolutely. So, and therefore, we leave and we release the, uh, the, the dynamic, um, uh, <clears throat> what is it, um, uh, the dynamic list to give the opportunity to the Hajis so that they can see their position in the queue. After which, that dynamic list is closed and then the actual accreditation is, I mean, it starts. And when the accreditation starts, the judge are given a period of one full month right. to accept the accreditation or to defer. Right. You accept the accreditation, and then you also have the opportunity to select the Hajj operator. I see. So within one month. Now, let's talk about if it were you that had actually applied, mm -hmm. and you are told that you've been accredited, and these messages are sent to the judge via SMS and email, mm -hmm. which they had actually uh, uh, jotted down during their application. Right. So information or some form of feedback is sent to them via those means to make them understand or to inform them about their accreditation. So That's if it were you, mm -hmm. you would obviously, you know, uh, be jumping to say, hey, you know what, I've been accredited, alhamdulillah, what do I do next? Right. You know, you wouldn't wait up to the last minute okay. for you to make the decision whether to accept or not to accept or to defer, whatever the case may be. Yeah, unfortunately, there are situation. Yeah, there, there are circumstances where people, were, you know, may need to defer and things like that. So when someone defers, Sheikh, uh, do they then go yes. onto the list for the next year, or how does that work? That is actually uh, left to the Haji himself. Okay. The Haji, when he defers, he mentions to Saho to say, "I defer to." Uh, probably next year, mm -hmm. or the following year, or the third year. Okay. So it is really upon the, the Haji himself or herself. Okay, I get it. Uh, let's look at, uh, you know, the last year of, uh, of our Khujaj. Um, how were the arrangements? Did everything go well? Um, did you get any new information? Is there any way that Sauk said, look, you know, we did a few X, Y, and Z last year, and, you know, X and Y work, Z didn't quite work so well. Uh, have we learned from the last um, Khujaj that visited Makkah? I must admit that, you know, each year comes with, you know, its uh, challenges and uh, new experiences, and uh, that's given. Right. Um, you will find that uh, we had had issues in the past, uh, where you know, a judge had to you know experience the, uh, the, the uh, a situation where water was cut off for about two hours. There were also other challenges challenges regarding to you know the space. Uh, there were also other challenges uh, with regards to you know our clinic. Uh, which in Medina I'm speak, uh, specifically speaking about, mm -hmm. and um, but Alhamdulillah we managed to resolve those, you know, the challenge of the clinic, and we managed to get a, you know, a, a, a different venue altogether. And I think it is important for me to just highlight here uh, what were the challenges all about on as far as the clinic is concerned. This is because the previous owners had actually uh, sold the business. Uh, to new owners who were not familiar with what Sahuk was do, uh, doing and where the clinics were being actually uh, conducted from. Sure. So uh, we had to move to another, uh, to another venue.
So we still con continued and we still operated. The other challenge was with the Maasasa, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, uh, who judge complained that, you know, the food was not up to standard. You know, as always, uh, you have your expectations. Yeah. And we've taken Maasasa to task for this. During the, the, the protocol, you know, visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Sahuk had gone uh, to attend and to sign various agree, uh, uh, contracts with various bodies, and they actually addressed all these issues. Mm -hmm. And Alhamdulillah, uh, there was, you know, a very good, you know, uh, uh, response thus far. So I can say that, yes, we can sometimes not resolve everything, but we don't sit back and say, we can't do anything about this situation. Of course. We chat into the second uh, deputy president of Sahuk, uh, Sheikh Adam Machaso, uh, all the way from Durban. If you have any questions with regards to Hajj and how Hajj works and how Sahuk works and what are the parameters on uh, where you would like to perform your Hajj, do join us on the WhatsApp line 079-085-2511. You are currently watching Hilal Live. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Hilal Live. Thanks for joining us. We are chatting to, with the second deputy president of Sahuk, uh, Sheikh Adam Macheso, and you can join us on the WhatsApp line. If you have any questions, any concerns that you would like to express, 079-085-2511. WhatsApps only, no telephone calls, unfortunately. 079-085-2511, that's the Cape Town number. Uh, you're welcome to send us a message. It is that time where we are preparing, thinking about going for Hajj. We'd like to know the parameters. So Sauk is the best um, important body uh, to give us the best advice as well. Sheikh Jazakallah so much for joining us once again. We really ap appreciate it. Jazakallah, brother Lukman. Jazakallah khair. And, and uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity. I'm honored. Jazakallah Sheikh uh, uh, Adam, with regards to the accreditation process, um, yeah. is there a specific criteria that Sauk has when someone would like to apply um, to perform the, this holy pilgrimage uh, to Makkah? Is there certain questions that they need to answer, number one? and the, what is the process? Do they need to go on the app? Do they need to phone Sao? Do they need to visit the website? What is the easiest method, Sheikh? The process, Jazakallah khair, brother Luqman, the process is really uh, so simple and um, um, people shouldn't think that, you know, uh, it's such a difficult process and it's making the whole exercise hectic and, uh, you know, um, uh, things like that. No, mm -hmm. it's a very simple uh, process. What you need to do is who applies? Mm -hmm. of, of course, only a Muslim can apply. Right. Who is uh, uh, in terms of you know the 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 the, 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 the girls fifteen and above, and uh, you have to be sent. Um, how do how does he or she apply? All one has to do is to go to. Uh, the Sahuk's website, which is www.sahuk.co.za, mm -hmm. www.sahuk.co.za. It's so simple, and when you go there, you will apply online, and then you will be required to pay an application fee of about 280-something, non-refundable. Um, uh, once you have done that, you have actually uh, applied. Now, many people make this mistake that they will apply and then will not pay the application fee. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That application will not be considered because there is no fee paid towards the application. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the accreditation, if I may just uh, go back there, is based on time and date priority. So you may apply now, as we speak, and you don't pay your, 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 your application fee, mm -hmm. and then you come to pay your application fee three months later. This will mean anyone who, were, who was behind you and had applied and paid the application fee will be ahead of you by three months. Yeah. That's the Spe disadvantage. Speaking about the charge, Sheikh, I've got a WhatsApp that's come through. It says, Assalamu alaikum. What is the fee Saud charges per 
Khujaj, and what's the money used for? I think they're referring to this application fee, Sheikh. Oh, no, I don't think, well, I don't know. Okay. Um, but I'll give answers to both. Okay. An application fee is a fee that actually uh, is charged. Mm -hmm. And you'll find this is not actually a, a, a new thing. Uh, but I think this particular individual is inquiring about the accreditation fee. Okay. I, I wish he had just elaborated there or explained which fee is he actually alluding Referring to. to yeah. If it's the accreditation fee, that fee, we need to realize that, you know, is used in many ways. It is a requirement by the Ministry of Hajj mm -hmm. that uh, South Africa and any non-Arab you know, uh, 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 countries have to go with the Be'atha. Mm -hmm. Be'atha is you know, a, a, a group of, we can, we can refer to them as like a, a Hajj mission. Right. So the Hajj mission, their responsibility is to go to the kingdom and to check everything in preparing the arrival of the hujaj. And these hujaj are received upon their arrival, be it in Medina, be it in Jeddah, and then they are bused to their respective hotels. Mm -hmm. That's one. And number two, the clinic that is also run, it is run throughout the Hajj period. We have a clinic in Medina, we have a clinic in um, uh, Azizia, and we have a clinic in, uh, in Mecca. Mm -hmm. So the clinic basically offers primary care you know, uh, uh, services. And it's not to do with operations and all those big, big issues. No, it's primary care uh, services that it offers. And you'll be surprised, Brother Lukman, mm -hmm. that the clinic is visited by so many people Whilst our quota is 2,500, but when you count the number of people that have visited the clinic, mm -hmm. is, it goes beyond 3,000. Wow. And then you wonder, how is that possible? It's because one has been to the clinic more than once. Right. And we keep record of these visits that are being made by our respected judge. Right. So that is just one aspect as to how those funds are being utilized. Okay. Uh, Jazakallah so much for that, Sheikh. We're chatting to the second Deputy President of Sahuk, uh, Sheikh Adam Macheso, around the uh, Hujaj, uh, making their uh, way to the Holy Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, inshallah. Uh, Sheikh, um, earlier on you mentioned that Sahuk was created and established to streamline the process of the applications for, um, for Hajj. Um, with that comes the various... Um, travel agents that have been also accredited and authorized to assist the Hujaj on their journey. Do you have a list of those travel agents? Uh, would it be possible to maybe give us uh, an idea who these travel agents are? Um, I, I really um, I will have to apologize because I, I had written the list of uh, the accredited hand operators right. and uh, in a rush, I forgot it right oh, at my table um, in, in an, at, the, at the office. But all I can say is there are more than 14 accredited hand operators. And it's on your website and though, right? People can go to your website to have a look at that. No, they can actually, yes, they can. Yes, they can. Okay. They can actually uh, find them on our website. And if there are any issues, they can always, you know, uh, you know, get back to Sahuk. But, you know, in, 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 in terms of record keeping, mm -hmm. what we actually have done is that um, we have actually uh, implemented, we are implementing a, track, a tracking system for record keeping purposes. And thus, no emails are responded to. So you have to go to the portal, and you can, you know, uh, uh, lodge whatever complaint that you may have, okay. or if there's anything that you want to uh, to bring to the attention of SAHO. Okay. Because that information remains on the system, and we can always allude to it if if need be yep. at any moment. Okay. Another question come through on the WhatsApp line. It says, "Assalamu alaikum. What does the insurance cover that is included in the visa fee?" The insurance cover that is 
All right. Um, that bit is, you know, uh, on the visa. You see, actually, even when you go for Umrah, mm -hmm. uh, there is an insurance cover that you need to, to take. Right. Um, this basically is to protect you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and a similar situation happens here when it comes even to Hajj. Right. So it's not a new thing. It is something, it's, it's, it's just a norm, and this is how... Uh, the Minister of Hajj and Umrah operates. Yeah. Sheikh, uh, last, advice, last advice to those that would still like to make an application that are considering on performing their holy pilgrimage to, uh, to the Holy Kingdom. What advice do you have for all those that would still like to apply? My advice is please do not wait until you have the financial muscle mm -hmm. because the queue is long, you rather apply now and wait in the queue. Right. If, for example, you happen to be accredited five years from now, four years from now, and you do not the capability to travel due to financial constraints, you can always defer right. to another year. So you will be sitting with your 100 points, and it will be easier for you to actually um, be able to travel when your financial position has actually improved, inshallah. Inshallah. Sheikh, how do our audience, uh, what is the best method to find more information? Website, uh, the app, or just call uh, Saouk office? Uh, your advice, Sheikh. My advice is uh, just go to the, uh, I, I mean, um, Saouk website, mm -hmm. because all the information is there. And if for argument's sake, you don't, you don't get or find what you're looking for. Our offices are, are there to assist you. You can actually visit our offices um, or even you know, call our offices. We have three offices, one in Durban, one in Johannesburg, and one in Cape Town. Okay. And our office number is 010-001-9108. Great. And our, our lady, the secretaries, will be able to assist you to the best of their ability, inshallah. Second Deputy President of Sahuk, uh, Sheikh Adam Macheso, Jazakallah so much for taking the time to talk to us. All the very best to you in Sahuk and pass all of uh, your staff, board members and management our salams. Jazakallah khairan, Brother Lukman, and uh, Jazakallah khairan uh, for, for the opportunity. I'm My honored. Pleasure. and. Um, I need to say that we pray for the best for our hujjaj. We wish them all those that have been accredited, Hajj Makbul, Hajj Makbul. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their hajj and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it an easy hajj for them, inshallah. Insha and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate all the difficulties that, you know, our hujjaj we're supposed to, to go through during the forthcoming Amen. Hajj. Amen. We wish them everything of the best. And of course, we've just released the fourth accreditation list right. uh, last night. But I think uh, it's also necessary that I give you this information. You have, if you have half a minute for me, Dr. Uh, Lukman. Sure. Very quickly, Chef, okay. uh, before we round up. Very quickly, yes. The number of judge who have accepted accreditation to date is 2,176. And the number of judges that deferred uh, the, uh, their accredit accreditation is one, 159. And uh, those that have actually, uh, whose accreditation got cancelled due to not meeting deadline from the third accreditation list is 115. And the number of judges that have accepted accreditation and still need to select operator online mm -hmm. Those are 291. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah. Jazakallah once again for the opportunity. My absolute pleasure. Salam alaikum, Sheikh. Jazakallah to Saouk for uh, attending the interview and sharing that valuable information as well. After the break, we chat to a very interesting project that's happening in Cape Town that we are going to broadcast live tomorrow from the Burkhab area. It is Football for Humanity. Do join us uh, between 6 and uh, 7.30 tomorrow, inshallah. And we're going to chat to the team just after the break. You are still watching Hilal Live.